We are back on Fresh Outlook. Wall Street has bounced back of late, helped out by comments from analysts that the economy is back on track. There's been modest job growth, but at the same time, so-so manufacturing numbers of late, along with slumping crude oil prices. Even with all of that, the Federal Reserve seems ready to raise interest rates. Following a 271,000-point gain in the October payroll report, Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester said the U.S. economy can handle a hike in the interest rate, and the time to do it is now. Short-term interest rates have been near zero for seven years, but now a majority of private forecasters polled by the Wall Street Journal do think the Fed will step up interest rates sooner rather than later, with sooner being December. U.S. Representative Brad Sherman, a California Democrat, said Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen Ellen should wait until spring to raise interest rates, citing a raise in rates now would be bad for the housing recovery. Yellen did acknowledge that a sharp rise in mortgage rates could have a negative effect on housing, but did also say we have a recovering economy. Employment is going up, income is going up, households are in better shape to form households. Yellen emphasized that the Fed would be looking at a very gradual, not a steep rise in interest rates. All this comes into play as oil prices drop to $42 a barrel and a week where the Dow ended down 254 points. While U.S. stocks opened lower, the dollar rose slightly against the euro. An increase in the cost of borrowing money also has some perks. Higher returns from interest income and banks more willing to make loans. So what does it all mean? Sticking around for this uh, segment is manufacturing expert and national and international businessman Lou Weiss. Also join and your yellow jacket. Also joining <laughs> us is Jim McCarthy, our friend and the owner of Directional Wealth Management. And Tom Lavecchia, he is a branding expert from X Factor Media. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank all right, you. so let's discuss the economy. We saw a lot of uh, ups and downs on Wall Street. Is this an indication that maybe people are not buying that the economy is getting better and maybe they're seeing it when they go out in the street and it's not enough money in their wallet to buy everything they need? There's multiple sectors within the economy. The uh, B2C world is improving. Retail is improving. Mm-hmm. Manufacturing is flat and it's going to remain flat for a while. Well, you're in manufacturing. You have told me this many times that this is really what drives the economy in many ways. It, absolutely. 20% of the, the GDP in this country is manufacturing. And that is equal to 10 of the major industrial countries in the world. So our 20% manufacturing sector, which appears small, is not. It represents 10 other industrial countries in the world. And when those numbers are flat, it says something. Yeah. Jim, what are your clients telling you when they come in to see you? Are they concerned or are they comfortable? Well, it, it sort of ebbs and flows, Frank. I mean, um, obviously in August and September, there was a lot of concern. The markets were exceptionally volatile. Um, then August, we had some better economic news and things seemed to be getting better and people were feeling a little bit more comfortable. Uh, and then in the last week or so, um, there's been a sort of a turn in, in commodity prices, uh, some lingering concerns over China's economy. Um, and then we had some soft, retail sales numbers, although that sort of masked some things. I mean, um, the, the baseline was flat, and that's what I think troubled the market. Uh, but the some of the segments were great. I mean, mm-hmm. like restaurants were up 5%. Right. Auto sales are still pretty strong. Uh, so I think, there's, as Lou said, there's parts of the economy that are doing okay and parts that aren't. People are nervous whenever there's stuff going on, and, and not to introduce you know, a non-financial topic, but what happened in Paris last mm-hmm. night clearly is going to have an impact when we show up Monday morning. Tom, what is the internet saying? What are, what's the buzz on the internet? Well, so again, this week, although retailers were showing some strength for a while, right. they got slammed. So still we're seeing a lot of transfer over from brick and mortar economy over to uh, digital. Mm-hmm. And only 7% of sales right now are digital. You think about this, $300 billion spent and it's only 7%. So we're starting to see the digital cut in and people get away from traditional shopping. But in the overall economic sense, the, co- the, co- uh, the uh, country's in trouble. But in trouble. You know, two things real quick. I mean, number one, uh, in that retail sales report on Friday, online sales were up 7%, yep. recognizing it's a small percentage right. of the economy. And the day before in China, talking about the Chinese economy, everybody's worried about it. China does this thing called single day. It's like a big online shopping day. Right. $14.3 billion, the biggest day it's ever happened yeah. in history. So the, even the Chinese yep. consumer is actually buying money. iPhone sales were up 70%. Um, auto sales were up 13%. So 
um, yeah, segments of the economy are doing well. Really you visit China like, on occasion. Uh, yeah, I do. What 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 is the economy like then? And the ec the economy. Uh, I I've been going to China for six seven years, and uh, their phases are very quick and very narrow. Right. So you can go there one year and things are good, and you go there the next year, then it's not so good. Right now, it's it's not so good. Mm -hmm. uh, they're shutting down steel mills. There, which means that anything, which is your business? Which is my business? Right. Uh, they're shutting down steel mills. They are uh, shutting down the cities that they built to keep the Chinese employed back five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the people in the outer rim, way from Shanghai and uh, Beijing. Beijing, and you go to the smaller towns and villages. And when I say small, I'm talking about five, six, seven million villages. But, yeah, uh, that's, uh, a villi <laughs> that's a village in China. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely. I've been in about 45, 50 cities, and they're very, very different. Mm -hmm. And the smaller cities are hurting. And well, how much of this is, you know, I hear this again and again, oil prices have really plummeted in the last year or so. Yeah. I mean, at one point, I remember they were at $120 a, a barrel, and now at 40 or 45 in that yeah. range. That has to hurt. And plus, there's more oil, oil coming out of the United States through fracking and other sources. So is, is that still in, uh, well, maybe I'll ask Jim, is that an indication of how the economy is doing, how we're doing with regard to oil worldwide? Well, that's a concern. I mean, China's an oil importer. Right. We're, we're actually net neutral right now as far as the country goes. We're not, net, we're not importing or exporting really um, so China is getting a big benefit the Chinese economy is getting a big benefit from lower energy inputs but that's a concern for the countries that are manufacturing oil like Canada and Mexico and obviously Saudi Arabia and, and the uh, OPEC countries um, and it what it creates is a disinflationary environment um, or a deflation excuse me, not disinflationary a deflationary right. environment where prices are going down and it creates that vicious cycle which is what the feds afraid of right now and that's why they're in a bit of a bind no. Because you, you, you mentioned the Fed, the, uh, the Fed. Yeah, because what happens is if, if people are, think the prices are going to go down tomorrow, they don't buy today, right? Right, Because, oh, I can get it cheaper tomorrow. And that's right. that whole deflationary cycle. Uh, and that's what the Fed's sort of stuck in a, in a conundrum with. They're also uh, stuck by the fact that we, we're potentially raising interest rates while the rest of the world is potentially lowering right. interest rates. So they're really. No, but I've been hearing since the first of the year that the 2015 was going to be the year yeah. where the Fed would bite the bullet and raise interest rates. Now here we are at the end of the year, and again the chatter has begun. Well, December def it was definitely September. Right. It was definitely in June. Now it's definitely in December. Well, well, here's the problem: the beginning of the year, or back into September of 14. Uh, we had the uh, Los Angeles uh, port slow down strike. Mm -hmm. uh, when it got he heated to the point of January, February, um, the, uh, the, d the daily cost of that port being right. shut down was a billion dollars a day. Mm -hmm. The mainstream media didn't talk about it until April when Obama finally got involved. Right. So for the first five, six months, we had a terrible beginning of the year. We had a not so good uh, August and uh, September. October was really the first month of the year that my manufacturing company really saw a perk up. Mm -hmm. right. And because we're a base industry, the fact that it's picking up in October, my personal feel feeling is that I think it's a mistake if they may raise it in December. I think they should wait for the February meeting. Well, well you know, Tom, also the, the uh, U.S. has gotten used to seven years of rock bottom interest rates, and I think it's almost like cotton candy for everybody on Wall Street. They're loving it, and there's a sugar high. It's an adrenaline. And now all of a sudden, you know, we may raise interest rates, and they're like, well, well we got used <laughs> to this. Where do you go with that? Well, so here's the thing I don't think they're going to raise interest rates in December this year yeah. at all. Although they can't. A lot the of economy analysts sucks. are saying Economy's they bad. are. They are, but they, they're saying that for the last how many years, yeah, right? So right. with that being said, right now with oil being where it is, right, and there are some deflationary concerns, right. the economy, the underbelly, especially now with some terrorist attacks happening in Paris, the underbelly is not strong. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to raise interest rates this year. Number two, Wall Street loves it because they're getting free money, right? But the only thing going up is the stock prices in certain sectors. Right. But it's not being reinvested in manufacturing. Retail is getting slammed. And frankly, you know, in, t in terms of online, we're seeing growth but in certain growth industries, but it's not enough to make the overall economy move forward. Well, Jim, who does this benefit, or Jim or Lou, who does this benefit when analysts come out and say, hey, uh, they're, they're more than likely going to raise interest The analysts. Rate. The analysts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they get to be on shows but, like this. That's right. They that's are right. supposed that's to be right. telling it like it is and yep. being they as don't honest know. as they, they can. They don't know. I, I, I just came back, I'm sorry, the, I just came back from the Fab Tech show in Chicago. Which is fabrication technology uh, fabri in fabrication Chicago. Fabrication technology. Right. They had 1,500 uh, 
um, uh, exhibitors. They had 50,000 attendees. Right. They were selling equipment right off the floor. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of for sale signs out. But the point is, if they raise the interest rate, then the manufacturer has to say, hmm, should I wait a while and see what happens? Or should I buy now in fear of the rate going up again and again so and again? So what would they do? Opposite, what would they do? Yeah. We'll let you know. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, mean, I think part of what... Uh, well, tell well, the analysts. Myself, yeah. inclo <laughs> myself included, you know, part of what people need to recognize is that we're, we've been at this rate for seven years. Yes. And it is an... It is an artificially low rate yeah. it's 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 out of sync and they're talking about a quarter of a percent interest rate so I think what people should focus on not so much is when they do the first rate I mean it may have an effect it's going to have an effect one way or the well, other even the mention it, of it sent Wall Street down the following I, day I agree but you know here again even after the jobs report last week which was very positive mm -hmm. right? so that raised the odds that they were going to go in December right um, and now the, this week is what it's been so now the, the oil prices went down and the retail sales were soft so now it lowered the odds again right. so now it's back down around 50 50 uh, for December <coughs> it's, it's, but it's, it's a quarter of a percentage point it's right. not a, it's not a, it's more about the significance of them doing it than I think what's more important from my perspective as a financial planner for my clients is the trajectory of those rates right, exactly. and how frequently right. they do it. So if they do a quarter point in December and then they wait till six months or, or they do one or two raises next year or maybe not even any, that's not going to be that but that's material. That's what they've been saying. It's going to be gradual right. when right. they it's do That's exactly do. what they've been right. saying. But again, they don't have a lot of credibility Correct. in the marketplace because uh, they keep saying we're going to do it and then they don't do it and we're going to do it and we yeah. don't do it. So now when they say we're going to do it slow, yeah. who's the believer? Well, I, think, oh, I think that... It, it, the economists are saying that we're going to have a 3% GDP for this year. Well, this is no, uh, November, and we're at a plus a half. Mm. So where are they getting the other 2.5% in the next six weeks? All right, we've got 45 seconds, so I'm going to ask you straight out. You'll be the analyst this time. Will the Fed raise interest rates in December, Jim? Uh, too soon to tell. I think they'll wait till the very last minute. I'm, I hate to punt on you. got to give you a but yes or no <laughs> here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say yes. Absolutely not. You say no. Double absolutely not. All right, so we have two no's against. We'll have to see, of course, and we'll know. I guess we'll check with the analysts. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much. Very good Pleasure. conversation about the economy. When we come back, when Fresh Outlook continues, those bombings in Paris this week and the ongoing investigation as well into what took down that Russian airliner over Egypt. We'll be right back. <laughs>